Peter, are you there? I am here. Uh, Peter, so sorry for making you wait, sir. We have a uh, we have got a jumbled up schedule this morning. And we're good. And yeah, and I'm so glad that uh, that we've got you locked in here because I really want to talk to you. You, my friend, are for people that don't know, you're an Olympic uh, medalist many times, a few times at least. <laughs> Two golds and a silver a long time ago in 1984 in Los Angeles. So there you go. You won uh, and you beat China? Is that who you guys beat back then? We did. They were the defending world champions, and we had a great team competition. We defeated them, and I went on to a, a gold on the pommel horse, and then a silver in the individual all-around competition. So there you go. I won three more medals than I thought I'd win, and I was glad to do it. Well, very nice. And now you're, uh, you're the chairman of the board of USA Gymnastics? I am. Okay, so you are the man that I need to talk to. I want to hear your opinion on this and find out what we can do. What is up with this bogus rule that only two people from each team can go on to the finals? You know, in my day, way back when, it was three per country. Um, and then for some reason they, they moved it down to two per country, and it's really unfortunate, especially when you've got the second, third, and fourth place gymnasts in the world qualifying, and you have to kick out the defending world champion with Jordan Weber. What a disappointment for her and for all of us to not be able to see her, but that's the rule. We all knew that going into it, and um, I guess it's an effort to try to add an international flavor so you don't have one country dominating when you have other opportunities for other athletes, and it just it is what it is, and it's just unfortunate here, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, but couldn't somebody, I mean, isn't there like a meeting with the IOC or something, and like wouldn't other people come and say like, isn't this supposed to be a competition to find the best of the best, no matter what country they're from? Like, why are we going to put, you know, some chick from Zimbabwe who, you know, just jumped on a, a high beam for the first time in her life in the same competition, you know, why not just get all of the best, no matter where well, they're that, from? Well, that won't happen. They actually, even for individuals that, that whose countries don't qualify them, they've got a qualifying standard that they have to meet. So there is a minimum standard. But you're right. And yet, if you look at something like swimming, where... You may have Americans go one, two in an event, and if there was a third one, then they could win as well. And yet that third swimmer had to stay home because they didn't qualify. So um, they, every, every sport has its limitations, and it's unfortunate in this case that the limitations really do affect the American gymnasts because we have such a powerful and strong team yeah, this year. Absolutely. And what do you, as the commissioner of the, the board, what does that mean? I mean, do you work hands-on with these gymnasts? I mean, do you, or are you more of the, like, governing body that says... Yeah, like, we're, the, we're the national governing body of gymnastics. I chair the board of directors. We have an office in Indianapolis. I, I'm not a part of that. Um, that office uh, has a staff and an executive director or a president that runs the corporation. And then we have a board of directors that kind of governs the, the corporation. And so I chair that board, but uh, uh, it's, um, it's a volunteer position. It's, I've been on the board of directors on and off over the last 20 years or so. So it's been a privilege to be involved in the sport at this level. And we've got some great, hardworking people that love our sport, and we're getting results. And it's very exciting right now. That is exciting. Do you get to go? Are you calling from the U.S. or from London? I'm here in London, so when you say good morning, I'm saying good afternoon. It's 2.30 in the afternoon here in London, and in about an hour, I'll be in the arena to watch the men's all-around finals and report on that. Excellent. Very, very nice. And so then, of course, we will probably watch that tonight in prime time here, and everybody will know all the spoiler alerts. And Was it different <laughs> yeah, back in your day? Nothing to tell you now, but we've got some great athletes competing. Two, two strong Americans in Danelle Leva and John Orozco, so we're looking forward to seeing good things from them. Do you think that we – I mean, what's your prediction as, like, a, an Olympic – gymnastics expert. Do you think that we can take gold? We do have a chance. Danelle Leva is leading after the preliminaries, but um, all of our scores start from zero again. They start from scratch. And if there is a consensus among the experts, I think most would say that the one with the best chance is Kohei Uchimura of Japan, who had a horrible competition in preliminaries, but he has won the world all-around title many times. He's considered the best all-around gymnast in the world, and if he pulls it all together, he will be the man to meet, to beat. But if not, I think Danelle Leva or John Orozco have an excellent chance of being on top of that podium tonight. Yeah, the, uh, the guy you just spoke of, the Hiroshima or whatever, he has killer hair, too. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of known for the hair, they, and uh, but he, you know he's kind of a rock star in uh, in Japan. He's had such success, and, and gymnastics is so popular in Japan. 
uh, that uh, he, he wants to do a good job and not let any, let any of his fans down after some very disappointing performances in the last yeah, few days. He's been dropping the ball there. I've been seeing some clips of that. Isn't it? I mean, it's different. I know in America where you if you win, you kind of come back a hero and you make money on sponsorships and endorsements and stuff. And if you lose, you come back and it's kind of like no big deal. But I mean, in some of those countries like Japan, they'll probably chop his legs off if he doesn't win. <laughs> No, no, that won't happen. He's he's a great athlete. He's already earned quite a bit of respect out there, and I, I know that he's got a lot of fans that, that care for him, and they're hoping he's going to pull through tonight. But it'll be interesting. Do you do you watch only gymnastics? <laughs> Excuse me, or other events too? You know, I um I, I I love the Olympic Games. This is my tenth Olympics. I've been to uh, eight summer games and uh, two winter games. So when I'm not watching gymnastics, I I make good use of my credential. I love to uh, enjoy the other sports, and I'll and I'll even report on the other sports if if needed. And so uh, I'd love to go to wrestling. My sons were wrestlers uh, growing up. I have a daughter that runs track in college, and and so I love to watch the other events. And uh, and it's just a great great two weeks for me here. I just love it being here. I can only imagine. Yeah, that just it's just a fun environment there what do you do as an olympic medalist i'm always curious where are your medals are they how are they displayed in your home or have you had to <laughs> to pawn them well, to send the to kids to school they used to be behind the soup cans in the kitchen but uh they're in a little just in a little case at home and uh you know they just kind of sit there and it's fun to to show them to people and and uh, yeah. it's, just a, it's just a dream come true. It really, they're just a symbol of a lot of hard work over about a 12-year period. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, that's the thing we all forget when we watch, that it's like these people devote their lives to this. It's not just a quick kind of, you know, hobby they show yeah. up for and win. I, I, I had Christmas Day off, and I had about another five days off in a 10-year period. That's so. insane. Are they, and that's another question, I don't know if you know, but like a gold medal, is that solid gold or is that just gold-plated? Ah, the great quest, the great trivia question. Bronze medals are made of bronze, silver's out of silver, and golds are usually made out of silver with a gold plating. So, so I trade all my life for something fake, but I'll still take it. Exactly. Yeah, of course. I mean, it goes down in history. There. Are you? Uh, are you expecting your children? You said they wrestle and stuff. Are you going to be highly disappointed and uh, probably disown them if they don't achieve uh, Olympic you know, medal status? Not at all. My, my my kids are older. I've got. In fact, my youngest goes off to college in the fall, and she got a gymnastics scholarship, so she'll be doing gymnastics there. I have a daughter that runs track in college, and my three sons are. Uh, either two of them are out of college and one is graduating this year, so uh, they're they're just uh, enjoying uh, uh, their futures in preparing for a career. And uh, but no. we do a lot of things. I did I did an Ironman triathlon with my son two months ago, the full distance one. So oh, that wow. was a that was a brutal experience. Yeah, I'll say that. I can imagine. Well, <laughs> excellent. We'd love to hear from you again. What's the big gymnastics thing after the uh, men's here? Is this kind of the end of the super exciting gymnastics? No, thing, the we... men's the men's all around finals tonight, and the women's all around finals, of course, is the next night. And Ali Reisman, Reisman and uh, and Gabby Douglas of the of the U.S. are in the hunt for the all around gold medal. And then we have the apparatus finals to see who's the best in each event. And we've got Americans on all of the events, men's and women's, oh, to good. look forward to. So there's a lot more coming down the pipe with gymnastics. And Excellent. Well, I cannot wait to see more. And, uh, hey, hopefully we get an opportunity to talk to you uh, later, you know, in the Olympics. Peter Vidmar from uh, the Gymnastics Association and from the Olympics calling in from London this morning. Uh, you have a nice afternoon over there. And saying thanks so much, Peter. Have a good one. Thank you. Great Bye-bye. to be on. The Big J Show. Weekday mornings from 6 till 10. On Billings' number one hit music station. Hot 101.9.